All right, evening, guys. My name is Matt, and tonight I'm going to be refuting the claim that the current minimum legal, legal drinking age in the United States has failed to prevent unsafe drinking. Uh, she had three secondary claims. One was that the legal drinking age should be changed to 18 because the reasons for keeping the drinking age at 21 are not valid. Two, the current drinking age has promoted, has promoted reckless behavior for those who are under 21. And three, the current drinking age in the, U in, in the United States is ineffective. So let's talk about our first claim, which is that the legal drinking age should be changed to 18 because keeping it at 21 is not valid. Now one problem I had with their speech was that she didn't provide much information as to why the legal drinking age was 21. Therefore, no conclusion could really be made by the audience concerning the validity of the current drinking age. Uh, I found that one key reason that the legal age is 21 years old is that states have tried to reduce it in the past. However, the results were catastrophic. Ruth Schultz, a senior epidemiolog epidemiologist at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, outlined this time period in the American General for Pre uh, Preventive Medicine. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, 29 states reduced their drinking age to 18 years old, since it had recently become the age that people can enlist in the military as well as vote. Immediately, drunk driving crashes and other alcohol-related fatalities spiked within those states, and out of those 29 states, 16 had increased their drinking ages back to 21 by 1983. Another reason that the legal drinking age is 21 years old is that our brains do not stop developing until our mid-20s. Teens who consume half as much alcohol as adults are, are still vulnerable to the same negative effects. Aaron White, a research professor in psychiatry at Duke University, found that teens are more likely to, to suffer blackouts, memory loss, alcohol poisoning, and damage to their ability to remember things in the future. In addition, the American Medical Association found that adolescent drinkers perform worse in school, as well as have an increased risk of social problems, depression, suicidal thoughts, and violence. Now moving on to our second claim, which is that the current drinking age has promoted reckless behavior for those who are under 21. Now this argument implies that reckless behavior is a result of, legal, of the legal drinking age. However, the current age was set in order to fight reckless behavior for those under 21. Jen Christensen, a producer of CNN's Health, Medical, and Wellness Unit, reported that before the minimum drinking age law, 16 to 20 year olds were the most common drunk dri drunken drivers. And when the drinking age was raised, the number of fatal crashes involving a teen driver dropped from 61% in 1982 to 31% in 1995. In addition, research by econo economists Christopher Carpenter and Carlos Dobkin showed that arrest rates for violent and nuisance crimes rise sharply at age 21 and persist through at least age 23. The study concluded that a lower drinking age would likely cause this period of alcohol-related criminal activity to start earlier and last longer. Also, the study suggested that a lower drinking age leads to higher levels of binge drinking later in life among men. Now, responding to her third claim, which is that the current drinking age in the U.S. is ineffective, now overlooking the fact that this essentially repeats the claim, her reasoning for this argument was quite vague and she failed to provide specific examples. William DeJong, a professor at, Boston's University, at Boston University School of Public Health, conducted a literature review of research published since 2006. He stated that there is no evidence that supports the claim that the current legal drinking age is ineffective. Most of this research reviewed the effects of lower drinking ages in other countries. One example is New Zealand. New Zealand changed its legal drinking age from 20 to 18 in 1999. And almost immediately, the country saw a spike in alcohol-related traffic crashes, which most, which of, most of which involves teens aged 16 through 19. Another example would be Europe. In Europe, the legal drinking age is 16. A survey conducted in 2011 showed that 36% of United States high school sophomores said that they had been drunk in their lifetimes, compared with 47% of European students at the same age. So in summation, the current legal drinking age of 21 years old is an effective like, regulation that prevents the deaths of thousands of individuals per year. I'll also leave you with a quote from William DeJong that states, you increase the availability of alcohol to younger people through a younger drinking age, and you'll have more drinking. It's really just that simple. Thank you.
All right, the structure is laid out clearly. It's going to be easy to follow. On the first point, you, you provide the context that you say that the advocate failed to provide, and then you uh, kind of show that, in fact, there is a negative consequence of the lower drinking ages, and you give us statistical information. I think we could use a little bit more contrast to the lack of information that the advocate provided. Uh, what information or reasoning that they use on that first point, uh, we could use some more contrast on, but I thought you had very good evidence on those particular points. And then you had the brain development argument that's added in on top of it, which is a good counterclaim, kind of goes in uh, on a different subject, but it uh, talks about a justification for why that is, in fact, the drinking age. On the second point, this is the argument, this is kind of the source of the argument. It's a causality claim. They're arguing that the higher drinking age is actually causing these problems, and so the question is, what evidence did they provide? I didn't really hear much reference to the evidence that the advocate provided, so I'm not sure if they provided any whatsoever, but you have very good counter evidence on these points that, in, in fact, uh, the uh, lower drinking ages are the things that cause the problem. The higher drinking age is effective at reducing uh, these kinds of problems, and I thought you had some uh, good data on that point. When you get to the uh, third point, for instance, the New Zealand data seems to reinforce that point, so I think that you might want to make a reference back to the second point when you get to that information, say, and here's additional demonstration of that particular point. And then the argument about it being ineffective, you said, well, the goal of it is to reduce the amount of consumption, and we know that uh, there's less consumption uh, when, it's, when it's illegal. Uh, we know that uh, uh, U.S. teens have been, uh, are, they're less likely to be drunk than their European counterparts because of that age. And then you've got that example of New Zealand on that particular point. So I think there's good evidence from your point on that. There's not much discussion of what the advocate's evidence on this point was or how they reasoned on that particular conclusion. But I can see the counterclaim that's being presented here, and that was very effectively presented. All right. Thank you.